guys remember that time when <laughs> Ty Burrell died on, on the screen? <laughs> oh my God. Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Emmy Award winning actor Ty Burrell. You know him as Phil Dunphy on ABC's mega hit Modern Family, now in its ninth season. And you can catch him on Mouth Feelings, a podcast where they talk about the things that go into your mouth and the feelings that come out of it. It's a great tagline. It's great to have you in the seat, Ty. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm very, very, very scared. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? I feel like everything I'm saying is going to be famous last words, but I, <laughs> I love hot food. I, I don't really have a very subtle palate. Mm. Like, I don't know I'm eating something unless it's hot. Yes. Wouldn't it be great if I checked out right now? Like, Stop. mother. So you got your big break as an actor a little bit later in life, which left plenty of room for some odd offbeat jobs. When you were working mm -hmm. as a forest firefighter, did you ever get a call that made you fear for your life? Fire made me fear for my life. I was a terrible firefighter. I was soft as cotton candy and had no business being a forest firefighter. Actually, the very first call we ever got was a semi with its gas tank on fire. Whoa. And it was a two-man crew. Oregon's not a big state. He, he was pushing us closer to the fire, and I was pushing us away from the fire, and we formed a sort of a TP. We were having a reverse tug-of-war on the hose, and I was bigger, and I won, and we ended up going very, very far away from the fire. <laughs> and tried to, I tried to spray it from like 50 yards away. It was more like this. How many of these do you do a week? You know, we go weekly, so okay. if we bank a bunch of episodes, then I'll have a chill couple weeks. But if that gas tank runs low, then I have to just start stacking them. Like so I did this yesterday. That's what I'm curious about, mm -hmm. is when you are stacking. Let's get to the stacking. It's really the cross that I bear. You know, it's the grave that I've dug for myself over this here. This is a hero's journey. This <laughs> is really a hero's is. journey. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. So the internet seems fascinated with Phil's philosophy, and then you've talked in the past about how sometimes the storylines in Modern Family can mirror your experience as a real life father. So with that in mind, what I wanna do is bounce some quotes off of you from other iconic TV dads. Okay. And I'm curious if you think it's good parenting advice or bad parenting advice. I'm a terrible person to ask about parenting advice. But well, let's see how let's, it goes. Yeah, let's do it. This first one is from Homer Simpson counseling Lisa. If you don't like your job, you don't strike. You just go in every day and do it really happy fast. That's the American way. <laughs> um, it, it is the American way. I guess it's, I mean, it's Homer Simpson. It has to be good advice. This next one is from Uncle Phil off Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. To be a good friend, you have to risk losing a good friend. I would agree with that, but I am so afraid of conflict that I don't know that I've ever challenge any of my good friends. So I don't know if I can live up to that, but I, I would agree with it in theory. You don't necessarily have to be that person to dish out the good Yeah, advice, right, that's, you know? a, that's right, exactly. I like to do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> and then this last one is from Phil Dunphy. The most amazing things that can happen to a human being will happen to you if you just lower your expectations. I love that on many levels, L lowest expectation levels. Where are your expectations today? My expectation today is that it's going to hurt and tomorrow is going to be a disaster. <laughs> From the Bronx, I take it. From the BX. So as we alluded to in your intro, you host a food-focused podcast. And yep. then your wife, Holly, I know that she's a pastry chef. Yep. How, if at all, has she changed your perspective on food? Because you've described yourself as a lawless animal when it comes to eating. We couldn't be any more different. The upside of having the palate of a goat is that everything she makes is great. And then I know that you own a pair of bars in Salt Lake City. What was the biggest hurdle you had to overcome in securing a liquor license? Because from what I understand, there's some strange rules in Utah. Yeah, well, they've actually gotten better. Back in the day, you had to do all kinds of crazy things. If you go all the way back, a drink couldn't be made in a bar. So they would actually give you like the airline bottle 
and the mixer. And you do it yourself. And you do it yourself. Then they have memberships where you had to kind of become a member to get into a club. So everybody who walked into a bar had to become a member. That went away. It's very hard to get a liquor license. That in and of itself is very hard. Somebody smarter than me found a literal loophole, which is that if, you, if there's a hole in the wall or a doorway, the place next to you gets your liquor license. So we leased the space next to us and cut a hole in the wall. And there you go. And got a liquor and license. Then, and then for the uninitiated, can you explain the allure of fry sauce? Well, fry sauce is mayonnaise and ketchup. So that's all it is. It sounds a lot more exotic than it is. And it's great. It's really good. It is really good. Thank Did you. Did you have a hand in? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. you know, like we had the lab coats on. You know, yeah. it's like, do we go with the miso base? Do we go with the chipotle base? Do we go with the habanero base? Okay, so this, I actually have a question about sure. this. My least favorite hot sauces are vinegar heavy. Mm. What are the other things that can preserve a hot sauce? It's tough. It's yeah, tough. But that just keeps it, right? Right. You know, you can do it with other options, but then sometimes you kind of like have a real short shelf life on that right. hot sauce. Right. So it's one of those things where you can find it or you can make it, but you kind of have to like eat it with the meal or within like a couple weeks because it'll go bad pretty or quick. Or refrigerate it. Yeah. It's the preserve, you know? We're casting a wide net with today's interview, but the fans, they'd revolt if I didn't focus on Modern Family for at least one wing. Sure. Who's your favorite celebrity guest cameo? Favorite guest star? One of them was very recently, which, which was Chris Martin, who is just the sweetest, literally like, where's the chink in your armor sweet? <laughs> Too sweet. Too sweet. Yeah, what are you hiding? Uh, yeah, what, <laughs> I thought he was gonna try to steal the show from us or something. One of my favorites going way back was Edward Norton. We had done a play together, and the show was probably in its second season, but he came in and did a very elaborate character, and we got to improvise a lot. It was a lot of fun. What have you picked up working alongside Sarah, Nolan, and Rico? Work ethic. <laughs> really? Yeah. The kids on the show, the kids on the show in a lot of ways were more professional than the adults from the very beginning because they were raised in that world. They knew all the rules, like the rules are just sort of ingrained in them. They know all the union rules. They always came prepared. You know, the adults were sort of like depending on schedule and stuff, you know, like right. various stages of preparation. Which cast member is most like their character in real life? Ed. I Ed. can see it. Yeah. And it's kind of an inspirational quality of, no, I'm not going to that. That's sort of Ed's tagline. No, I won't be there. <laughs> I'm going to stay at home. What's hot in Hawaii? The volcanoes. There's a volcano in this. It's I'm going to start cool. sweating soon. Good, I can't wait. I know that's happening. <laughs> No, What's definitely. the most anybody's ever sweat? Joey that? Coco Diaz, I thought maybe gonna we lose, were gonna lose him. Gonna dry out. <laughs> Tom Arnold, I was like, uh oh, like, that's what's gonna take down the show. Eventually. All right, I'll, I'll see if I can see what I can do about that. All right, Ty. So we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. But as we just talked about, <laughs> we don't have an account, which no. really throws a wrench into our system. <laughs> Sorry. But we figured out a workaround. What we've done is pulled some of our favorite Ty Burrell sports pictures. So. I'll I'll show you the picture and oh then my you just gosh, tell me the bigger right. story. Does that sound good? I like good? this, yes. All right, so this first one, throwing out the first pitch at yeah. a Mets game. Are you nervous for this? Very, 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 very nervous. Probably as nervous as I've ever been for anything because I'm sort of a delusional athlete. Like, I think I'm a better athlete than I am. So now it's time to step up to the plate, literally. Not, not quite literally. Um, I practiced and did not throw a strike. The catcher, who was a gentleman by the name of John Buck, as it was coming in and going off target, he ran out and caught it and made it seem like it was just part of his normal run out to the mound to congratulate nice me. Nice little frame situation. Yeah, he framed, exactly. He did a very long-term frame <laughs> and then pulled it in and then came out and shook my hand. What do you remember about playing on a high school basketball team that set an Oregon State record for the most consecutive losses? The guy, who the, was there the night we broke the streak was a professional weightlifter and he came in and he gave a speech and he said, you guys can never quit. I've never quit. And then as we were on our way out, he was like, and I've never won a single weightlifting tournament. <laughs> and we were running out the, onto the court to try to break our record, but somehow it worked. I guess we were like, we don't want to be that guy. <laughs> I like the workaround on Instagram. 
That's good. Yeah, I'm starting to really. I'm Jeez. feeling that one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So you've said that you went to graduate school as a tactical means of avoiding auditioning. That's true. And then while it's not ditch digging, acting can be tough because you have to kind of become comfortable with rejection being a part of everyday life. Do you remember your yep. first TV audition? And if so, was it the humiliating experience that you always expected it or feared it would be? Yep. It's funny you use that analogy because I always say it's not digging ditch too because I actually did dig ditch for a few weeks when I was in junior high and it was the worst job of my life. But the humiliation can be incredible. One of my very first auditions, I had two weeks to work on this. I was using a British accent. I'm not particularly talented with accents, but I worked really hard on this accent. And <laughs> as I was sitting down in front of a just a big bank of people, intimidating people, and the casting director, he whispers in my ear, oh yeah, we're not using the accent. So I gave an audition trying to switch out of a British accent into an American accent on the fly that sounded like I was having a stroke in front of all of these people. It was like, that's where you land, Mr. Ma'am, Madam. I take it you didn't get the call back. I did not. <laughs> I did not even get real like eye contact on my way out. <laughs> Sauce Picante. Dawson's is almost a crisis. Right. It flirts with crisis. It flirts with crisis. I would agree. Yeah. It's good, though. So I know that you fell in love with Salt Lake City almost 20 years ago. It's a place that you and Holly and your kids call good home. research. Wow. But as a byproduct of Ashland, Oregon, I know that the Beaver State still holds a special place in your heart. So what I wanna do is give you a number of categories and you can tell me which state reigns supreme, Utah or Oregon, does that awesome. sound good? Yes. National parks. Utah. Northern Utah is amazing too, but for very different reasons. Southern Utah is all the stuff you sort of see, the 127 hours world, mm -hmm. but it's really just an incredible place to spend time. It's really easy to get to. It's unlike anything on earth that's sort of like what I imagine Mars is like. Sundance Film Festival or the Oregon Shakespeare Festival? That's really tough. I'm gonna say the Oregon Shakespeare Festival because it's even more of an anomaly, like a crazier thing than a Shakespeare Festival ended up. Such a huge, successful one. And I say this with the fact that I tried to get work there forever and they never hired me. So this is how good, <laughs> this is how, they were smart enough to never hire me. So that, I think, puts them at the top of the list. Do you have a take on this whole self-service gas law in Oregon? Because it seems to be tearing the state apart at the seams. I think it's us trying to hold on to something that we feel makes us interesting. This is like a, an idiosyncrasy. It's like somebody, you know, keeping their flip phone. Clyde Drexler or Carl Malone? Oh, Drexler, of course, I mean, that's not even close. Malone is the largest man in the history of, of human life to fall down at somebody blowing on him. Like, he was such a flopper. He a little ahead of his time, maybe. Way ahead of his time. But I mean, the guy could not have been more stout to be fl flying into chairs and constantly sprawling out on the floor. We, we had a real dislike for Carl Malone in Oregon. Now this was on your previous season, correct? This one we can't move because it's the face melter. If people, oh, the boy. fans would go nuts if we took it out. I'd like to take it out as somebody who's eaten it about a hundred times. I took a big bite of that. <laughs> I'm afraid to inhale. You guys remember that time when <laughs> Ty Burrell died on, on screen? <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. <coughs> oh boy. That's where shit gets real. Over the years, you've made more than your fair share of red carpet best dress lists. And I'm curious from the outside looking in, how do you unpackage the relationship between the celebrity and the celebrity stylist? In other words, how much influence do you have over your Golden Globes fit? And more importantly, how much do you care about it? You know, if I'm being 100% honest, <clears throat> I'm sort of a dandy fop, like I actually really, I dig it. I don't want to be that guy actually, like I'm from Oregon. I want to be like a man's man, but I just, I'm not. You want to be the flannel Paul Bunyan yeah, guy. Yeah, even when I am actually camping, I'm like, ah, this is too put together. 
this. <laughs> I shouldn't have, I thought way too much about this. I need to learn sign language. <laughs> to carry this one home? To finish this one out. All right, so this next one is Mad Dog 357 with number nine plutonium. <laughs> when we start getting into scientific stuff, I just feel like this should be put into some sort of a capsule to fuel something. Elon Musk. This should be called Elon's Musk. That hurts my lips. Yeah. That yeah. makes my lips hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the first time uh, ever that my teeth have hurt. I feel like my teeth hurt. Welcome to the club. So Hollywood has a reputation for being this dog eat dog place where the assholes win, but you seem to have a more grounded disposition, a more low key lifestyle. And I'm curious in what ways has being the nice guy actually served to help your career in La La Land? And can you give me one time where it was maybe a detriment? I'm always trying to reiterate, work really hard and you'll work if you're talented and you work really hard, but that there's a certain element of luck that gauges your career, it's so hard to think with the pain that's going through my face. <laughs> but, um, um, for whatever reason, I've never felt that I could control my career. I don't consider that like a personality thing that I've made happen. I just feel lucky that I've never felt that way. I think that the way it works is when you get an opportunity, if you just exceed the expectations of whoever gave you that opportunity, yeah. then you'll get another opportunity. I totally agree. I totally agree. It doesn't. It doesn't require all that other thought, right? It's just that you you will get opportunities and you just have to absolutely throw yourself into them completely. And you don't, <laughs> and you don't even have control over how well that thing does. Right. Like this is, this must be kind of a cool thing, this whole show for you, right? The, it's a glass half full, glass half <laughs> empty situation. Is this glass full of hot sauce? <laughs> yeah. Everybody has a problem. They just yeah. want a problem solved. solved yeah, so if you sure. can solve that problem, yep. then they'll keep giving you problems to solve. To All right, Ty. So you guys went in on the last one. So this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. Okay. You don't have to if you don't want to. I want to. But the bottle's already there. I want to. Okay, so now I can feel myself sweating. Mm -hmm. um, you look great, though. <laughs> um, this is the first time, I have to go back and, and watch to see if I've touched my nose, but my nose hurts. And I've never had my <laughs> nose hurt from hot sauce without touching. We really find your limits here on Hot Ones. That's how it goes. Well, I mean, what's the extent of this? Do your ears eventually hurt? People are like, my neck is stiff, like my back hurts. And I'm always like, well, I haven't been there, but you know, it's just, it's limitless. It's not a health aid. It's not. That's not why we do this show. All right. All right, Ty. Cheers. Cheers, my man. Cheers. That's really good. Mm hmm It is really hot. Mm hmm I'm not just saying it because it's your brand, but it also tastes, you can actually taste it as well. That's what we tried to do. You did it, hot ones. All right, Ty Burrell, now that you've battled 10 yeah. scorching hot chicken wings on yeah. YouTube, I just have one more hoop for you to jump through. All right. It's been written that you blink excessively when well, you're noticed. stressed or excited. And in season two of our show, I had an epic stare down with Jay Farrow. I lost, and it has oh, haunted me win. ever oh, since. Welcome to your first So victory. here, now that I have the low hanging fruit yeah. in front of me, oh, I'm yeah. going to try to avenge it. It's no holds bar. I'm the count of three. First to blink <laughs> loses. One, two, three. I feel so good that I am about to give you your first win <laughs> in a blinking contest. And I need it. Oh, so if I win, I'll never get out from under it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I needed that, but you know what, Ty Brown? There are no losers today. You cleared the board. Uh, you made it through against all odds. And now there's okay. nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, my friend. This camera, this camera, this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Today is the day I became a man. 
Well, we already talked about the podcast and our businesses in Salt Lake and Park City, so I would like to talk about Kids in the Spotlight, which provides funding for foster kids to make their own films and tell their own stories. And so please go to kitsinc.org. Uh, Good job, Ty. Thanks, Ty. Thank you. I had a great time. That's awesome. That really is. Literally, this may be the most masculine thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very impressed <laughs> with what it's worth. Hey, what's going on, Spice Lords? It's Sean Evans checking in from a table by himself. And do you notice something different? No, it's not a new haircut. The jacket, you've seen it before. We have a new bottle of the last dab, Carolina Reaper edition. Still got it. It's the last dab in the Carolina Reaper, together at last. A special edition. Pick it up while supplies last. Heatness.com. Cop your bottle. It's still a tough one.